For rural leaders, the limousine is an important element in making a great entrance. The vehicles are designed with special features to protect rural leaders' personal safety. Queen Elizabeth II travels in her Bentleys, while the Emperor of Japan prefers a Toyota Sentry. Chinese President Xi Jinping usually hits the parade road in the Hongqi L5. Russian President Vladimir Putin can often be seen climbing into an armored Aura Senate limos. But there are few limousines more recognizable than that of the United States presidents, and it is known simply as the Beast. After the assassinations of the President Kennedy in 1963, the United States decided to renounce open top presidential car and redesign a fully enclosed vehicle with reinforced armor. The Beast is equipped with advanced communications equipment, protective armor, and a series of special equipment. It operates off of the Secret Service classified motor pool, but a few specifications and secrets have leaked out over the years. This is what we think you should know about Cadillac 1 or the Beast. <coughs> William McKinley was the first US president to ride in an automobile, but it was during Theodore Roosevelt's administration that the first government owned car, a white Stanley steamer, came into use. It was a steam engine powered automobile in the late 1890s by brothers Francis and Freeland Stanley. Then, Theodore Roosevelt succeeded McKinley as president, although Roosevelt allegedly preferred horses to automobiles. The steamer car was just a car without any customizations, so during his touring with this vehicle, it was accompanied by six agents. US neutrality in World War II ended after the Japanese launched a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. Under tremendous pressures, President Franklin D. Roosevelt took on the role of commander-in-chief when US entered the Second World War. At the time, there were some large, vocal, and powerful extremists challenged the President Roosevelt's efforts to enter the war. Furthermore, with the attempted assassinations to President Roosevelt during his speech in Miami, the federal government decided to build a car that is specifically for presidential use with Secret Service specifications. Therefore, the first customized President car, Lincoln K. Sunshine Specials, was born in 1939. Originally, this Lincoln V12 convertible was built by Ford Motor Company and then later modified by Brown and Company to US government specifications. The car's comfortable roof gave the busy presidents a chance to enjoy the sun and for touring purposes, hence the name Sunshine Special. The car equated with a silent, running lights, and a two-way radios as well as extra-wide running boards and grab handles for Secret Service agents. Armor-plated doors were added to the car along with a bulletproof tire. If the occupants of the car needed to go on attack, storage compartments for submachine guns were added down the side of each door. The weight of the car increased to 4.2 tons after the modifications, known as the safest car in the world in 1942. <coughs> During Ronald Reagan presidencies, due to the assassinations of President Kennedy in 1963, the convertible model vehicle no longer in use, Hence, the first caddy in the presidential fleet came with the Fleetwood in 1983. This car continued to offer armor protections with the doors, 60mm bulletproof glass, and the roof of this Cadillac presidential limousine has been raised 3 inches above the standard height and widened to provide a distinctively large glass area, so that the president is visible to the greatest extent during parades and ceremonial occasions. To deal with the added weight of the armor, the car had oversized wheels and tires, heavy-duty brakes, and an automatic leveling system. On March 30, 1981, President Reagan had just finished addressing a labor meeting at the Washington Hilton Hotel and was walking with his entourage to his limousine. But they didn't know John Hinckley standing among a group of reporters. He fired six shots at the president. All six of Hinckley's shots missed Reagan. While one Secret Service agent pushed Reagan into the limo, another put himself between the shooter and the president. Ironically, the last bullet ricocheted off the armor limousine that built to protect presidents and hit Reagan in the left underarm and lodged in his lung. President Reagan, apparently unaware that he has been shot, was shoved into his limousine by a Secret Service agent and rushed to the hospital. After firing the shots, Hinckley was overpowered and pinned against the wall, but later he was found not guilty by reason of insanity. He was obsessed with the lead actress Jodie Foster, who casted in the 1976 film Taxi Driver, and had attempted to impress Jodie Foster to reenact the events of the film in his own life. However, because of his obvious threat to society, he was placed in St. Elizabeth's Hospital, a mental institution. And for Ronald Reagan, who survived from the gunshot, 
resumed some of his executive duties and signed a piece of registrations from his hospital bed on the next day after this incident. After that, the security to U.S. president's safety has been further strengthened in order to maintain a safe environment for the president and other protectees. The Secret Service called upon other federal, state, and local agencies to assist on a daily basis. When the president travels, an advanced team of Secret Service agents works with the whole cities, state, and local law enforcement, as well as public safety officials, to jointly implement the necessary security measures. After prototypes of the new model were seen driven on public roads wrapped in monochromatic multi-scale camouflage, the Secret Service confirmed that the program to replace presidential car from Lincoln to GM's Cadillac. The beast, first used by President Barack Obama in 2009, like Air Force One, the official presidential limousine is a sophisticated, whose sole purpose is to allow the president to be an effective executive while in motion from place to place. Therefore, it was named as Cadillac One and the Secret Service gave it a nickname, The Beast, because it is one of the safest vehicles ever made and cost a whopping $1.5 million. Although it is a Cadillac, while the headlights, taillights, and certain grille elements are identical to those used by stock Cadillac's vehicles, just about everything else is secret and custom built by GM. This car is 18 feet long and weighing 14,000 pounds, which is equal to the weight of four Toyota Camry sedan. Much of the weights come from the car's armor. The bodywork on the limo is said to be at least 5 inches thick armor. The armor is a combination of dual hardness steel, aluminum, titanium, and ceramics which helps it withstand some of the most lethal projectiles. The doors of the car have armor plating that is 8 inches thick and are the same weight as a Boeing 757 cabin door. Additionally, the fuel tank of the car is armor plated and filled with a special foam which prevents it from exploding even if it takes a direct hit. The armor limousine has its own life support units such as firefighting system, tear gas, and smoke screen dispensers, and equipped with two pints of bird in the president's bird type to tackle the worst eventually. These life support machines will keep president alive if he is critically injured. The interior of the limo is as sealed against chemical and biological attack. The armor limo also has a special automatic lock safety system that in case of emergencies, seals off the entire car. Along with a panic button installed for the president, and there's a satellite phone that connects him to the vice president and the pentagon. It holds 7 passengers, at the very least, the beast has three passengers aboard, the driver, the president's lead secret service protective agents in the front passenger seat, and of course, the president himself. However, four additional seats in the back are available, three rear ward facing spots on the bench, and one spot next to the president for a guest. The windows on the Cadillac's one do not roll down except for the one on the driver's side, which can open only a few centimeters. They are reportedly 5 to 6 inches thick, bone proof, and can withstand armor piercing bullets. The front windscreens can also take the brunt of armor piercing bullets, or a .44 Magnum shot from close distance. The Cadillac one is literally loaded with defense accessories. The armor limo has night vision cameras installed in the front and back to help the driver drive it without its headlight on. The palm action shotguns and tear gas cannons are among some of those weapons speculated to be included. Tires are one of the weakest links of a car, and destroying them is the easiest and the quickest way to immobilize the vehicle putting it under severe threat. The tires on Cadillac 1 are specially designed to withstand intense harm from the likes of bullets and spike strips and keep the limo moving. The Kevlar reinforced tires are shred and puncture resistance. But even if something managed to damage the tires, they are fitted on bespoke steel rims and have run thread mechanism that will help drive at high speeds to escape dangers. The current model has a Duramax 6.6-liter V8 supercharged diesel engine. Due to the weight of the car, it could only reach out 60 miles per hour max, and the fuel consumption is insane, which is only 3 miles per gallon, while the average car gets around 25 miles per gallon. Furthermore, the base is not alone. Why there are two of them in the picture? Well, nowadays two identical vehicles with identical license plates and they are always operated at the same time to confuse any potential assailants. When they are out for the drive, they are always accompanied by a presidential motorcade that is made out of pretty big fleet containing nearly every vehicle class. 
The whole parade consists of a hazmat van, a road runner, a watchtower, support vehicles, CAT, and a halfback. This convoy is capable of tackling any ranging from a chemical attack to nuclear and even a conventional attack. Guess they are taking their security pretty seriously after Kennedy. By the way, do you know the beast actually has its own airplane? The Secret Service made use of a C-17 Group Master transport aircraft to haul the beast, a second limo and a heavily armored Chevrolet Suburban communication vehicle anytime the president is traveling. They range in size from a couple of SUVs to up to 45 vehicles for the president. It is essentially a whole fleet of vehicles that make up a mobile and armored White House. The president's car is maintained by Secret Service agent. They will destroy the presidential car after it is taken out of service which is a tradition that started after the 911 attacks. The agent will shoot the vehicles with bullets, an explosive round to showcase its effectiveness and destroy all evidence of its protective features. Then they will either bury the car or sink it into oceans. The president has no shortage of transit options, from Air Force One and Marine One to Cadillac One. Now, meet Ground Force One, the president's black armor bus and the most recent additions to presidential fleet. The Ground Force One is a 45 feet long bus specially designed by the Secret Service. The Secret Service purchased Ground Force One and its twin decoy from the Tennessee based company Hanfield Brothers Coach for a cool $1.1 million each, but ultimately the buses are cost effective. Formerly, the Secret Service used standard buses that they lease and fit with equipment needed to run the country from 8 wheels. However, it was announced in 2011 that a new permanent solution had been found the Ground Force One. The bus comes with a suite of security precautions, including run flat tires, armor exteriors, and heavily reinforced glass. Similar to Cadillac One, the bus features an array of security features including oxygen tanks to guard against chemical attacks, and extra supplies of the president's blood, and an enemy suppression fire system. In addition to the security features, the bus comes equipped with a full suite of office equipment including phones, televisions, radios, and internet. Ground Force One allows the president to be transported comfortably and safely through a series of more remote areas, such as during Obama's bus campaign through Ohio and Pennsylvania in 2012. Since all the windows except the ones at the front of the bus are heavily tinted, President Obama has to stand next to the driver in order to wave at crowds. The bus also makes transportation logistics easier, as the president can immediately go from Air Force One to Ground Force One. Although the Beast is not the most expensive presidential car in the world, compared to the Queen of England, their Bentley State limousine actually cost $15 million. But no doubt, the Beast is considered as the safest vehicle on the planet and capable to take care of the most important persons in the world. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and thumbs up if you like it.